That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, my dudes, y'all know we have been live streaming every single night doing fantasy drafts leading up all the way until the season. If you haven't been able to come out to the live stream, just make sure you are dropping likes on these videos. You're subscribed to the channel, but most importantly, you're hitting the bell next to the subscribe button. And I know that a lot of people have been saying they're not getting notifications lately when we upload videos, when we go live, even though they have that bell hit. And guys, I can't do anything about it. I'm really sorry. It's just the YouTube algorithm. This is why most people don't upload multiple videos in a day because when you do, it really messes you up in the YouTube algorithm, but I don't care. We're gonna continue to do it. We're gonna continue to provide as much content as possible. So yeah, we are gonna be breaking down some underdog fantasy football drafts right here that we got sent by the listeners of this channel over there on Twitter. Now, I'll say that we actually do this every single day on Patreon, where if you want your fantasy draft broken down by me, if you're a Patreon member, all you have to do is shoot me a DM. I'd be very happy to go through and break it down. Now, I don't necessarily do it with the video just because it's so much work with how many breakdowns I do every single day, but I will get you an exclusive podcast only for your team. And of course, all that can be found on Patreon. And if you want to get in a draft with us, if you want to support the channel, if you want our draft guide, if you want a free $25, Make sure you use promo code flock on underdog fantasy. Nothing helps this channel more. And yeah, that should be it. Let's dive into this first team. And this first team is going to be by Taylor JD. And here, I just want to thank you so much for supporting the channel. And yeah, let's dive into this roster. I actually have a lot to say. Okay, so if we pull up the quarterback position first. Okay, I don't know if this was done before the Carson Wentz injury. Actually, now that I'm looking at the draft picks, yes, it was done after the Carson Wentz injury. So I will say I definitely do not like this call here where we have to understand that with underdog fantasy, this is a league where you don't have access to a waiver wire. You draft a team and that is your team throughout the entire year. And whoever the highest scoring player from each position was, that's what gets slotted into your starting lineup to make out the entire starting lineup. So at quarterback, what we really need to make sure we're doing in underdog fantasy that we don't necessarily need to do in a regular format is you need to be drafting quarterbacks that we know are going to be starting all 16 weeks. So if we pull this up right now, you have Tom Brady. Love the Tom Brady pick. I mean, it looks like you get him at a decent range where you take him at 101. His ADP is 103. I'm fine with Tom Brady there. But when you draft Tom Brady and you wait until after pick 100 to do it, I definitely want to make sure that we're getting our second quarterback relatively soon. And we need to make sure that we're getting someone that's going to be starting all 16 weeks because that's how spike weeks actually help you in this format. Because if Tom Brady is a down week where he only has eight points, yet you drafted Derek Carr on this team as well, you know, Derek Carr is going to play all 16 weeks and he drops 28 points that week. You didn't have to make the decision going into the week. I want to go with Tom Brady here. Derek Carr is automatically going to go into your starting lineup. So the fact that you kind of pass on that quarterback too, and then later on in the draft, you have to reach on a Taysom Hill. You take him with the 188th overall pick. And yes, if you know that you're getting 16 games from Taysom Hill, you love this selection. But the problem is we have no idea what to expect. So Taysom Hill is the last kind of quarterback that I want in this format. And then also Carson Wentz. I, I can't get behind it, man. If you're going to be with only pretty much one quarterback for the first eight weeks of the season, this team's dead right out the gate, and I really don't have anything else to say about the quarterback position. If we slide over to running back here, I mean, you take Derrick Henry at pick five. Now, y'all know I'm not a massive fan of Derrick Henry, but if you're going to take him, I'm fine if you wait until he gets to the fifth pick overall. Now, I prefer a few players over Derrick Henry. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, and Devontae Adams. So you better tell me that Devontae Adams went at the fourth pick. If you want to take Derrick Henry over Barkley, I'm not going to argue too much with you at this point. Now, Clyde edwards alaire in the second round. I like CEH there. And then once you draft your two running backs with your first two picks, I think the need to go through and fill out the rest of the roster at running back isn't necessarily sky high. So after that, you get Leonard Fournette, you get Kenyon Drake, two guys that could potentially pop off in your starting lineup that should have small roles on their respective teams. And if an injury occurs in the backfield, those roles will grow. And then you have Devontae Booker. Now here, Devontae Booker, I'll point out something. You took him at pick 164 and his ADP was 202. So that's definitely very aggressive with Booker. I don't necessarily think we would have taken him that early, but definitely like him going very late in these best ball drafts. 
Now, going over to wide receiver, obviously, this is the spot that you like. So you get Allen Robinson in the third. I've been drafting Allen Robinson in the third in so many of these drafts. You get T. Higgins as well. I, I mean, two of our wide receivers that we are targeting in almost every single league. You get Brandon Ayuk, Cortland Sutton. Now, with Cortland Sutton, of course, I'm not a massive fan of him and really any of the Denver Broncos wide receivers this year. Besides, if you can get K.J. Hamler in the last round of one of these best ball drafts, then I love K.J. Hamler. But you do get him slightly behind ADP, and we don't necessarily have the board to see what other wide receivers were available. You do get LaVisca Chenault in the next round. Now, I will say I definitely prefer having Chenault over those Denver wide receivers this year with how I'm expecting the overall Jacksonville Jaguars offense to be better than the Denver Broncos, given the fact that they have Trevor Lawrence coming in. But I do really like Chenault. Then you get T.Y. Hilton at a value. You reach on Nico Collins slightly, but you get Demarcus Robinson at a massive value. So the wide receiver position is really good, as well as tight end where you get Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett. Looks like you reach a little bit on Tyler Higby, but I think you're fine going with two tight ends there. So I think the main thing with this roster, and I hate to say this, but I would say this team has almost no shot at winning. Like you need Taysom Hill to play all 16 games if this team wants to have a shot at winning an underdog league. So not a good draft, my man. I'm going to be completely honest. I think the quarterback position just got messed up. And trust me, I'm going to be messing up so many of these drafts, especially on live streams where I'm having to stream and it's only a 30 second clock. So I'm going to be right there with you with a lot of my own drafts that I mess up. I'm sure that y'all will be in those drafts with me. So y'all can be laughing at me at the same time. But of course, when we break down these teams, we have to be 100% honest because if I'm not 100% honest, my opinion or really my thoughts, they don't mean anything at all. So now let's go over to a team in Icklewick who has come out to almost every single one of our live streams so far, and he's jumped in some underdog drafts with us. So here, let's start it off at QB where he gets Kyler Murray at the very end of the fifth round. So I'm fine with it. I mean, you take him slightly behind ADP, and then you get two quarterbacks afterwards that are going to start all 16 weeks. And these are guys that I prefer in the best ball format. I prefer a Derek Carr. I prefer a Sam Darnold. In a regular league where you have access to a waiver wire, there I'm not necessarily going out of my way to draft them. But I think Derek Carr, Sam Darnold are the perfect type of quarterbacks for this league. I don't necessarily think you need to get three guys, though. And this is a big thing I want to focus in on with quarterback strategy is in these best ball leagues. I think there are certain builds that you want to be drafting three quarterbacks, where if you wait and your first quarterback that you select is a guy like Matt Ryan, there, yes, 100%. We need to get three guys. That way we have the highest chance possible of just rotating through and getting random spike weeks from the entire quarterback group. But when you take Kyler Murray in the fifth round, it's at such a large opportunity cost for the wide receivers that are going to be in that range. For that draft pick to pan out, Kyler Murray has to be an elite level quarterback. So if Kyler Murray, you're already banking on him being an elite level quarterback, once you get another quarterback that's going to be playing all 16 games in Derek Carr, that's it. That's it. I am just drafting two guys. I would much prefer having a fifth running back on a roster like that because we get to your running back position right now. You take Aaron Jones at 11. Love getting Aaron Jones slightly ahead of his ADP. I don't care. Aaron Jones is my ninth player overall in fantasy drafts right now. I like quote unquote reaching on him slightly, even though I think that's a great pick. Now you get Miles Gaskin at pick 62. Also, I do not mind Miles Gaskin in this format. You reach a Michael Carter a little bit. Not a massive fan. I'm not going to hate you for it. Then AJ Dillon at 107. I will say I don't like drafting AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones on the same team. I mean, a big thing is when you're drafting AJ Dillon, while yes, he definitely has the potential to go through and score some touchdowns, make your lineup even when Aaron Jones is healthy. A big reason why you're drafting A.J. Dillon is the hidden upside of if something were to occur to Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon vaults up to being a running back one in fantasy. So if you draft Jones and Dillon at the same time, say Jones goes down for the year and all of a sudden you have a team that only has three running backs on it, you have no access to the waiver wire, this team's dead anyway. So when you draft Jones in the first round, the last thing that you can really afford to do in a format like this is go out of your way and handcuff Jones with A.J. Dillon. So trust me, I love A.J. Dillon in this format. I'm going to be drafting him in the ninth round every shot I get, but not on teams where I draft Aaron Jones. You want either one of Aaron Jones, one of A.J. Dillon on their respective teams. You don't want them on both. Okay, so now going over to the wide receiver position, this position is loaded up with talent. I mean, here you drafted eight guys. You have DeAndre Hopkins in the second round. You have Robert Woods in the third, Julio Jones in the fourth. Then you wait a little bit. You go to Curtis Samuel, Elijah Moore, Traquan Smith, Brian Edwards, Terrace Marshall. 
So this is a loaded wide receiver room. And I think that you have both the ceiling and the floor that we're looking for in a combination of guys like this. Not too much to say here. You took guys at relative values compared to where they're going with their ADP. Now at tight end, you do get Johnny Smith and Jared Cook. So I can't see the last tight end that you got on this roster due to the screenshot cutting off. But given the fact that you drafted him after Jared Cook, I'm going to imagine it's someone like an Eric Ebron, someone we don't need to be too concerned with. And I will say, if John Smith is your tight end one, Jared Cook is your tight end two, you better believe you better get a third tight end in there. So here, my overall recap of this draft is, I think there were two main mistakes. And guys, I know that I just sound like an ass when I talk about this and just point out the mistakes on these respective rosters. But if you come out to a live stream of mine, if you've seen one of my team reviews, that's all I focus in on. I mean, every single draft, I look like an idiot because I go, what did I get wrong? I ask everybody in the chat. They all give me their own opinions. I'll pick apart little things and I'll go, okay, you're right. I can improve on that next time because I think the number one thing that we can do is you can take advantage of this underdog offer, deposit $10, get a free $25, then go through, do like 10 of these real drafts, given the fact that you're not going to be going up against the computer. You're going to be going up against real people. You'll have a great understanding of how you can actually go through and be an expert drafter in 2021. And what you want to be doing when you're doing these drafts is looking at what you did wrong and trying to improve on it. So what I think we did wrong in this draft is I think taking a third quarterback after you get Kyler Murray in the fifth round, I think that's a mistake. I think that third quarterback spot you need to allocate to your running back position. And I think when you draft Aaron Jones in the first, I'm not going to be drafting A.J. Dillon in the ninth. I would love Jones in the first. I love Dillon in the ninth, but not on the same team. Okay, so now let's get to our next team. This is going to be coming out from JM2 Suite. And here at quarterback, he does exactly what we were talking about. He drafts Kyler Murray in the first round. But after that, he actually goes out and he only drafts one more quarterback, which is completely fine. And at running back, he has a very intriguing build. Okay, so this is a hyper fragile build where he goes through and he goes, we're going to spend at the very top at this draft at the running back position. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to spend a ton of roster spots on it. And here I'm actually kind of fine with going through and making this just hyper fragile build. Given the running backs that you get, you get Austin Eckler, Antonio Gibson, Kareem Hunt and Chase Edmonds. So while you look at the team before, they only had four running backs, the four running backs and the construction they had, I mean, it didn't really make sense. I think they needed a fifth, whereas I am perfectly fine with only four running backs on this team. And then at wide receiver, you have that stack with the LA Rams, which is of course something we need to be pointing out, getting Matthew Stafford at quarterback and at wide receiver, getting Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Russell Gage, Rondell Moore, Brian Edwards, Jameson Crowder, Amara St. Brown, KJ Hamler, and Deshaun Jackson. So I really love that while you didn't necessarily get anybody you can feel extremely comfortable about at the very top of this draft outside of Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, what you do instead of just going through and crying about it, you draft nine guys because a big thing in a best ball format are these wide receivers they're going to all be playing a significant amount of snaps this upcoming year. So if you can have them all in the field, you're going to be able to piece together that wide receiver production just by numbers, just by the off chance of, hell, maybe there's a random week where Jamison Crowder goes out there, he catches seven balls, he finds his way into the end zone, and he's making your starting lineup. And when you have that many players like this, I mean, what happens if KJ Hamler gets behind the safeties and Drew Locke hits him on an 80-yard touchdown, even if that's his only reception for the day? I mean, at that point, that's 15 points that slides into your lineup. So I love the idea of drafting nine wide receivers on a roster like this, where you didn't necessarily have the luxury of getting any of those wide receivers early, especially when you can stack those guys with the Matthew Stafford like you did. Now at tight end, you did go out there, you get Dallas Goddard. Okay, a quick side note. At the time of this recording, Dallas Goddard is my most owned player on underdog. I can't stop drafting him mainly because I'm not willing to pay up for the price of a TJ Hawkinson. So I'm always ending up with Dallas Goddard. So please, please, please trade Zach Ertz away. So Evan Ingram, Anthony Ferksker. So I love Ingram at a value. You actually got him behind his ADP. You got Anthony Ferksker behind his ADP. So yeah, I mean, tight end perfectly fine here. This is my favorite team that we have broken down so far. I know it looks a little uglier on paper with the wide receiver position, but I think a roster construction is way more important in a best ball underdog draft than the actual players themselves. I mean, getting guys at values and making sure they fit together on your roster is crucial in a format like this. Okay, so now our last breakdown that we are going to be doing of the day is going to be for Washer. And here, this is a team that decided to go with Josh Allen in the fifth round at quarterback. So you know what I'm already going to say. 
When you draft Josh Allen in the fifth round, the opportunity cost that you have for those wide receivers you're passing up on, you need Josh Allen to be an elite quarterback for that pick to pay off. So there's no reason for you to go through and you draft three quarterbacks on this team because you need to spend that third potential quarterback spot on a wide receiver all of a sudden. So you take Derek Carr extremely late in the draft. I really like getting Derek Carr as a quarterback that's going to start all 16 weeks. Combined with Josh Allen, you're going to be expecting Josh Allen to start the majority of those. But taking Jameis Winston, I know you did so at the very end of the draft. I still don't know if I can get behind it. I think we would much prefer having a wide receiver there. But now if we go over to running back, you have Derrick Henry, Chris Carson, Kareem Hunt, James Robinson, Darrington Evans. So it looks like you mainly just went through and you got some guys at value. Derrick Henry, man, I really urge you to go through and just go to YouTube, search Fantasy Flock Network, too many red flags or stop ignoring these red flags, something along those lines. Watch our Derrick Henry video because I think there are so many red flags. I can't be drafting him over Alvin Kamara. I can't be drafting him over Devontae Adams. So I don't like the pick at three, but if you're going to do it, I, I mean, I still really like the fact that you got Chris Carson at the end of the fourth round. I think that is a fantastic pick for your running back too. And then you got a value with Kareem Hunt, James Robinson, not too much to say there. At wide receiver, you get Allen Robinson at the beginning of the third. You get DJ Chark, one of my favorite wide receiver targets this year. Then Curtis Samuel, Elijah Moore, Gabriel Davis to stack with Josh Allen. Jalen Rager, you take Jalen Rager as a falling player in ADP. Jamison Crowder, Brian Edwards. I do like Brian Edwards at the pick that you got him, pick 171. So yeah, at wide receiver, I do like that you're going out and you are drafting eight of them when you were not able to get those guys at the very top. And tight end, what I really like what you did with tight end, and I think you should have done the same thing at quarterback, is once you draft Darren Waller, the reason Darren Waller is so valuable in this format is you get him and then you don't have to draft another tight end outside of your second tight end in the entire draft. You draft Darren Waller, and then you only have one other tight end on that roster, and you can spin the extra roster spot on wide receiver. So you get Waller, you stacked him with Derek Carr later in the draft, which we love. You also have Evan Ingram on this team. So yeah, I think this is a fantastic team. What I would have liked to see you do is instead of getting Jameis Winston, I mean, possibly even get a wide receiver nine on this team. I think he's going to see your starting lineup more than Winston will. But yeah, that should be it, my dudes. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. And most importantly, I really hope I see y'all out in a live stream sometime soon, guys. Please, if you want our 2021 draft guide, make sure you go over to Underdog, make a $10 deposit with promo code FLOCK. And at the same time, you're going to get a free $25 from Underdog. If you want your team broken down by me, make sure you join our Patreon community. And if you want me to send you that draft guide, just shoot me a DM anywhere you can saying, Mason, I went through, I used your code to deposit on Underdog, and here's the email that I did so. That way I can go and confirm it. And yeah, thank you so much, my dudes, for watching this video. Drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all with the one tomorrow. We've gotten a ton of new members joining the flock. Thank you, Grind for Gold, Devin, Bungified, Brian, Brody, Victor, Chris, Grant, Trevor, and David. Thank you, my dudes.